Following the announcement on September 4 by Commander of the Air Force of the Islamic Republic of Iran, General Hamid Behedi, that acquisitions of Su-35's fighters from Russia were under consideration, the possible roles the aircraft could play in the service and the numbers it may be acquired in have been widely speculated. Iran has not acquired fighters from abroad since the 1990s, when it received two MiG-29 squadrons and a single Su-24M strike fighter unit, ordered from the Soviet Union, as well as older J-7 lightweight fighters from China, leaving its fleet almost entirely obsolete and comprised primarily of Vietnam War-era American jets acquired in the 1970s. Although Iran operates 17 fighter squadrons, only two of these can deploy active radar-guided air-to-air missiles, namely two F-14 units acquired from 1975 to 79, which have been modernized domestically. No aircraft acquired from abroad had moved past mechanically scanned radars to deploy phased array radars. While Iranian drones serving under the Revolutionary Guard Corps have frequently operated beyond the country's airspace, including stealth designs that have penetrated Israeli airspace, the Iranian Air Force itself has not meaningfully operated abroad since the Iran-Iraq War of the 1980s. The only notable exception was the bombing of Islamic State insurgents in Iraq that were operating near Iranian territory in the 2010s. Integrating the Su-35, a heavyweight design and the most costly non-Western fighter ever exported, thus leaves it with no clear place in the fleet and no fighter which it could serve as a direct replacement for. Russia currently offers two main types of modernized MiG-29s for export, namely the MiG-29M which uses a new airframe design and is closely related to the latest MiG-35 platform, an older but scarcely used Soviet-built MiG-29s, which can be modernized with the same engines, avionics and sensors under programs such as the MiG-29 SMT or MiG-29 UPG. These older MiGs have met the large majority of foreign orders, with hundreds of MiG-29s having been retired by Russia when the USSR disintegrated very shortly after entering service, and many more kept in storage and still not assembled. Either kind of MiG-29 would provide capabilities far ahead of Iran's existing fighters, and both are compatible with phased array radars, either the widely used Jacques Mipisa radar or the newer Jacques AM ISA radar. Where Russia exported MiG-29M fighters for approximately half the price of the Su-35's modernized older MiG-29 airframes brought up to a standard similar to the Indian MiG-29 UPG. And perhaps integrating the superior Jacques AM for maximum performance against stealth targets could potentially be acquired more cheaply still. Iran has over the past 30 years developed an ability to domestically maintain and produce many parts for the MiG-29, meaning integrating new variants could be done smoothly and allow it to replace multiple units of obsolete third-generation fighters, such as F-4s. In terms of avionics and armaments these aircraft are equivalent in sophistication to the Su-35, with the Zuck AM being a newer and in many ways more advanced design than the Urbisi. While the Su-35 does have a superior performance to the MiG-29 in most parameters, the obsolescence of the Iranian fighter fleet and its lack of overseas or long-ranged operations means acquiring more shorter-ranged fighters with similarly modern avionics and armaments could be a much more suitable option than fielding a small number of costly long-range heavyweights. The latter option leaves the bulk of fighter units able to make only minimal contributions to the country's defense. The Su-35s cost an estimated $1 billion for every 12 aircraft, although this can vary depending on how they are equipped or the scale on which they are acquired. While the fighters have gained considerable foreign interest, threats of Western economic warfare measures against any country that acquires them has deterred the large majority, while competition from the much cheaper but in most areas comparably capable Su-30SM and from the higher-end Su-57 have further restricted market share.
Whether the Su-35 is the optimal choice for Iran remains in serious question, with the aircraft having many notable strengths but also significant shortcomings. A major benefit of acquiring the fighter is that they can likely be delivered very quickly, with Russia expected to prioritize exports over expanding its own units and potentially passing the two dozen aircraft initially built for Egypt on to Iran. This could make deliveries almost instant, as widespread speculation abounds that Cairo has sought to cancel acquisitions due to Western threats made against it.